So, uh, yeah, the student ad actually showed up. So, Stefan is here <laughs> to uh, present his GSOX um, project. So, yeah, uh, you got uh, your flight was canceled or delayed. You know? uh, yeah, I <laughs> missed, I got, went to the wrong gate by accident. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> but he's here, so, well, the stage is yours. <laughs> All right. So uh, during the Summer of Code, uh, I decided to work on uh, adding drawing tablet support for Wayland. Um, I don't know if uh, many of you guys have probably seen them, um, the drawing tablets that a lot of artists will use, uh, usually made by Wacom. Um, so just to give a quick introduction myself, um, I'm Stephen Chandler Paul. Uh, the name I usually go by is uh, Liud um, online. Um, this is my first major contribution to the uh, Wayland project. Um, I've only had minor contributions to the Linux kernel and uh, minor contributions to x.org before this. Um, and I am currently a uh, sophomore in uh, college. So the current state of uh, tablet support is uh, we've gotten basic motion support down, um, tool objects, which I'll explain more in a minute, um, pressure, distance, tilt, and uh, stylus buttons. Right now, we don't have uh, active area selection, which I'll also explain in uh, just a minute working. Um, we, uh, we don't have rotation, tablet mice, um, any of the uh, selection wheels or touch strips that you'll see on some uh, tablets, and uh, no support for the uh, LEDs, or at least in the uh, lib input in Wayland. Um, so what's so challenging about drawing tablets? Um, they're really weird. Uh, you have a lot of strange setups with them that you wouldn't run into with any other input devices. Um, we've heard setups of uh, multiple tablets being used at once, um, different settings being assigned to each tablet um, in such a way that doesn't really, uh, I guess, um, correspond with any of the uh, other input devices that you'd usually handle, like touch screens and so forth. Um, they also have tons of different tools. You've got pencils, airbrushes, pens, pencils, uh, mice, anything you can think of. Uh, they've probably got a Wacom tool for it. Um, they give far more information than any uh, other type of uh, input. Um, uh, they have sensitive. They uh, have pressure sensitivity, um, tilt, uh, tons of different axes that you have to account for. Um, and like I said before, multiple tablets can be used with the same system um, in such a way that we actually have to handle them separately. <clears throat> so lib input and uh, tablets. Uh, lib input, uh, and uh, I'm sure Peter explained it in uh, his previous presentation. Um, it's a library that we use for uh, writing uh, compositors and such uh, to uh, interact with input devices. Um, so before the uh, Summer of Code, we didn't have any real tablet support. Uh, we did have some patches uh, that actually uh, got submitted the uh, same day I got accepted for this project um, by Carlos. Um, our original idea was to uh, just have tablets act as another uh, mouse cursor. Um, this is how the current X dot this is how X dot org does it right now, um, and this is also how Windows and OS X um, handle tablets, um, where you just multiplex everything through the uh, cursor itself. Um, we decided to, uh, after some discussion, we decided to uh, handle them separately from uh, mice. Uh, this does have the uh, disadvantage that clients have to uh, have extra code for handling it, um, but we decided it would be easier to maintain. We wouldn't have to complicate the API being used for mice. Um, we'd already done it anyway with uh, touch screens um, and other various input devices in uh, the Wayland protocol um, and in Libit input. Um, and the only real reason, or one of the biggest reasons that you would push everything through, uh, through the uh, cursor is for legacy support. But Wayland is a relatively new platform, so that's not really something we need to worry about. Um, so tablet axes and lib input, lib input how they're handled. Um, axes are basically anything that gives, I guess the best way would be anything that gives information. For example, how hard you're pressing the uh, stylus down on the tablet would be an axis. Um, it's more than just X and Y. Um, 
it's pretty much anything that gives a number. That's the simplest way I can put it. Um, so every time uh, libinput receives a uh, EV sin from uh, EVDEV, um, which is a uh, synchronized packet, meaning we've uh, received the end of uh, all of the uh, the value of the uh, current axes and everything from the uh, tablet device. Um, every time we get that, we uh, pretty much dump all the uh, current values of the uh, tablet axes onto the uh, client. Um, we only do this, of course, if something's actually changed. Um, so if all the app, uh, tablet axes haven't changed, we don't send anything. Um, we use a uh, bit field to uh, indicate what's changed and what hasn't. Um, most of the axes are normalized. Um, I'll talk about this more later, but I'll give like a uh, basic rundown of why. Um, a lot of the axes, uh, pressure and uh, pressure, especially actually, um, don't either. They don't have a unit that we can um, represent them with. I guess is the best way to put it. Um, there's no real way to uh, translate um, the pressure from the stylus in uh, pounds or anything. Um, because on some, actually, uh, what I've experienced is on uh, some pens, it's not it's somewhat, sometimes not linear. Um, and then with uh, distance, or I'll get more into that in uh, just a minute. Um, but the uh, axes for tool movements also, um, X, uh, so X and Y are also included in the axis, upda axis updates, um, which isn't uh, the same as uh, touch, or which isn't the same as uh, mice and everything, where uh, they have a separate move, uh, separate update for uh, X and Y. Um, we, oh, oh sorry. Um, so uh, we decided to include them in the uh, access updates because almost every time when uh, you move the cursor, um, the other axes update anyway. So it didn't really make any sense to have them as uh, separate updates or as uh, separate events. Um, so what I was talking about before with the normalization, um, we ran into a lot of issues with figuring out units to actually represent um, the values of this. Uh, um, for example, uh, X and Y axes for tilt, which we found out um, can actually be translated into an uh, angle. Uh, if you don't know what the uh, tilt is, um, a lot of uh, higher end um, Wacom tablets can actually detect the uh, angle that you're holding the pen at. Um, uh, they also actually report distance, um, how far the uh, pen is from the tablet itself. But we ran into the issue of uh, it's not entirely accurate. Um, if you hold, like, let's say you're holding it like 10 millimeters from the tablet and you have it on the left and then you move it to the right, you're going to get a different uh, distance value for each one because of the placement of the sensor in the tablet. Um, and the tablet doesn't compensate itself for that. Theoretically, we could potentially translate it into a real-world unit, um, but we haven't really tried yet because it's not really one of the top priorities. Um, and we also don't want to give the impression that we can give information that we don't have on a uh, tablet. So if we do anything like that, we have to ensure that it is more or less mostly accurate. Um, ideally, we'd like to avoid normalization on most of the axes, but the problem is um, we either ha most of them we either have to use raw values, which to most clients is kind of useless, um, or normalization uh, for all the reasons I listed before. Um, of course, if we can find a way to uh, represent pressure and such in real world values, uh, we'll definitely be implementing it. So uh, lib input tool object, and uh, this is what I mentioned before about uh, tool objects. Um, it represents a physical tool that has been or is in use with the tablet, um, pencils, pens, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it contains the physical type of tool and the serial number. Um, something that's worth mentioning about uh, tablets, because I didn't actually know this until I worked on the project. Um, Many of the uh, higher end uh, Wacom tablets will actually report a serial number with each physical tool. Um, for example, you could have uh, two identical pens and the tablet can tell the difference between each one because they both transmit a different serial number. Um, as I said, this is really mostly with the uh, high end tablets, uh, lower end tablets such as uh, Bamboo um, and the uh, new Intuos um, do not uh, report serial numbers. 
Uh, but this is where lib input tool object comes into play um, because we can use lib input tool object to uh, differentiate between each one, uh, to differentiate between each tool. Um, so what's interesting about lib input tool, uh, lib input tools is the lifetime of the object actually extends beyond the duration that the uh, tool is in proximity. For example, if I was to uh, take a pen, put it uh, in proximity of the uh, tablet so that the text it's there and creates a lib input tool object and then take it out of proximity, um, it will actually store the lib input tool object in a uh, list even after I've taken the pen out of proximity. The reason for doing that is um, by doing that, we can actually guarantee that every time the uh, client, uh, that every time the uh, user puts a specific tool in front of the uh, tablet, they always get the exact same uh, object, um, exact same pointer and everything, um, which makes uh, working with certain applications a lot easier. Uh, if you want to check if the tool's changed, all you have to do is check the pointer. Um, and you can also map uh, data to the tool, um, which is extremely useful, especially if, um, and this is uh, usually where serial numbers uh, and differentiating between tools comes into play. Um, it's especially useful if you want to map something like uh, pressure sen for uh, pressure sense uh, settings to a tool, or if you want to uh, map maybe a different color, so you've got like one pen that's red. Um, you could do that to the uh, lib input tool object. And the uh, list that's used is uh, stored in the lib input seat. So, um, if, so it's shared between tablets. So if you use one pen with one tablet and use it with another tablet, you still get the same object for each one. Um, there is an exception for this, and that's, uh, as I mentioned before, the lower end tablets that don't report serial numbers, such as the uh, Bamboo and Intuos. Um, we, because of uh, because of the lack of serial numbers, we can't actually make any guarantee that each lib input tool object uh, in those tablets is actually unique. So uh, because of this, we have a separate list for uh, any tablets that don't report serial numbers. Um, and the tool objects for each of, uh, for each of these tools is stored in that list. Uh, the lifetime of the list is only for as long as the uh, tablet is connected. So uh, if you use a uh, pen with a bamboo tablet um, and you unplug the bamboo tablet, uh, it will just destroy the object, uh, usually because there's no use for it uh, afterwards. Of course, if you do want to keep it afterwards, you can always use Liput Toolref um, and increase the reference count. Um, we, decided, we decided to uh, do this because uh, in situations where you can't tell the tools apart from each other, um, it's usually desirable to treat them differently for each tablet. Um, that's what a lot of applications use, and we decided to uh, provide behavior that would make uh, that sort of uh, behavior easy to implement. So buttons, um, buttons are a lot more complex than I thought, I would, than I thought they would be. Um, as a result, we actually only support uh, stylus. Um, none of the uh, buttons on the actual tablets are supported. Um, the reason for that is uh, Linux Wacom is somewhat inconsistent when it comes to that. Um, the uh, device that the uh, button presses are sent from, uh, for, those who don't, for those of you who don't know, um, many times uh, tablets have multiple devices, uh, virtual devices when you plug them in. For example, you might have a uh, device for uh, the touch itself, which would be uh, the surface of the tablet. You can use it like a uh, mouse pad, and then you might have another device for uh, the pen and one for the pad itself for the uh, buttons. Um, but this is where it becomes inconsistent because where you get the uh, button presses from and what button presses you get uh, changes between each tablet. Um, for example, the Intuos that you see, uh, or Intuos Pro that you see in the top uh, right corner, um, that one, all the buttons starting from top to bottom, with the exception of the uh, center button, which is button zero, it's all uh, button one to nine, um, which is easy enough, and it comes from the uh, stylus device, if I recall correctly. Um, but then uh, the bamboo right there actually uh, has four buttons, but they're mapped to mouse buttons. Um, and they come from the pad device instead of the stylus button, uh, instead of the stylus device. Um, because of that, it makes, uh, it, we could 
have implemented support for for it in lib input, but it wasn't really worth the effort um, because uh, we have right now developers working on improving the Linux for Com driver. Um, Benjamin Tezoris, uh I hope I'm pronouncing that name right, um, is one of them I know who's uh, working on improving it. Um, one of the reasons why we run into issues like this is because uh, Le Linux was uh, made for a lot of legacy applications um, and hasn't really, as far as I'm aware, hasn't really been updated very much uh, except for uh, supporting the capabilities of new tablets. So touch wheels and strips, um, these are another thing that were uh, pretty much not really possible to implement, or not really easy uh, to implement um, in lib input. Uh, they're somewhat consistent as far as I'm aware. Um, they usually come from the same device. Uh, I might be wrong in that though because I haven't uh, done extensive testing with them. Um, but they uh, share axes that are actually used by the uh, pen or by the uh, tools themselves onto a com tablets. Um, for example, when you use a uh, touch wheel, it actually uh, starts sending a negative uh, serial number of negative one. In which case, and this is what the uh, XF eighty six uh, input Wacom driver currently does. Um, it's supposed to assume that anything with negative one serial number is a part of the pad. Um, so it starts sending negative one, and then it starts using the, S the uh, ABS wheel axis, which is actually the same axis that is used on another tool for the tablets. As you can see, things kind of get a bit messy there, um, which is another thing that we are hoping to fix up in Wacom. So right now, this isn't really implemented. It wouldn't make sense to implement it until that uh, is fixed, at least. Um, button boxes, I saw this on uh, when I came in um, Peter's presentation show. I don't, uh, did he actually explain button boxes or? Um, the, the reason why I bring them up is because this is one of the uh, solutions that uh, we had come up with possibly using for uh, supporting the pad buttons in the future. Um, basically, button boxes, it's anything with a lot of buttons. Um, and it's re it really is that general because uh, it's pretty much made for devices that don't really have a single form factor. For example, uh, the uh, Griffin PowerMate, which is just a single knob with a button on it, um, and then the Novation Launchpad, which is a ton of buttons with different colors and so forth. Just things that don't really match the uh, general, um, that don't really match uh, a specific category and have their own category of their own. Uh, so we uh, thought that it might be possible to use this for uh, representing the uh, buttons, our pad buttons, on the uh, tablets uh, because it would be, it would make sense because uh, a lot of times the uh, tablet buttons are the same way. Um, some uh, one tablet may have vastly different buttons than another. Um, some tablets have uh, strips and others don't, and so forth. Um, so. This is our current solution for potentially supporting pad buttons in the future. Um, so the Wayland protocol for uh, tablet devices. Um, so it hasn't been merged upstream yet, but we do have a working Western implementation, um, along with a, a small demo for uh, tablets that shows off uh, processor sensitivity and so forth. Um, all the features that we have support for in lib input are technically supported in the uh, protocol annotation we have right now. Um, we do have basic support for using the uh, desktop shell with uh, tablet or with the uh, tablet. Um, as I said before, uh, clients actually need separate code for uh, handling tab uh, for handling uh, tablets. So we had to implement that in the desktop shell. But uh, a lot of the other applications don't really support it yet. Um, so we added three new objects to the Wayland protocol, WL Tablet Manager, WL Tablet Tool, and WL Tablet. Um, first one, uh, WL Tablet Manager, and remember I said uh, we, couldn't, we have to handle each device separately. Um, because of that, we can't multiplex them all through one uh, object, which is where WL Tablet Manager comes into play. Um, it's a global object similar to the uh, Wayland seed object. Um, it's responsible for notifying clients of new tablets uh, and tablets being removed from the system. 
and it informs clients about each tablet uh, model, manufacturer, and any other information they might need to know. Um, WL tablet, not really much to say. It's just the uh, object where all the events come from, motion events and so forth. Um, and each one represents a different tablet. Um, then the WL tablet tool, which is an, uh, analogous to a uh, lib input tool. Um, it contains the physical type of tool along with its capabilities. Um, and we have to actually mention the capabilities with each tool or have them specific to each tool because certain tools uh, rep, uh, support certain axes while others don't. For example, um, I believe one of the, uh, they have a uh, higher grade um, pen that supports rotation while the normal one doesn't. Um, so we want to be able to give clients a uh, general idea of uh, what, what uh, each tool they're working with supports. Um, we send a remove uh, event when the lifespan of the tool is expected to end. Now, this doesn't really happen if you're only working with uh, tablets that represent serial numbers. But uh, if you're working, uh, if you are working with uh, tablets that don't like the bamboo and such, um, then you'll get a remove event um, when the tablet's disconnected um, and they're destroying the uh, lib objects at which point you're pretty much expected to uh, get rid of your own tool object. Um, so the tablet axes in the Wayland protocol, we decide to group them, uh, put them in groups, motion, pressure, distance, and tilt. Um, instead of uh, doing one big axis update, um, it makes it easier to add axes in the future, like rotation and so forth. Um, and it's pretty easy for clients to uh, work with. Um, there's also WL tablet frame. Um, a lot of times this might not be used, but uh, it pretty much represents uh, four axis updates, specifically uh, EV SYN event. So since we get every single axis update from a tool at the same time, um, we can use the uh, tablet frame to tell uh, which axes updated during um, an update from the device. Uh, so tablet axes are uh, normalized either from uh, 0 to uh, 665,535, uh, maximum value of a short um, in C, or uh, negative 665,535 um, to uh, 665,535. Um, keeping, uh, since keeping the numbers as is to uh, converting fixed width, um, if we kept them as uh, the normal float values that they are and just converted them to fixed width like uh, 0.90 or something, um, we'd lose too much precision, um, especially since a, a lot of uh, axes will report values, uh, will have, uh, for example, pressure on some tablets will have uh, 4,096 uh, different pressure values, which uh, we wouldn't be able to t uh, t all the different uh, pressure levels if we didn't um, up the value to something like that when converting it to fixed width. Um, it also gives us a lot of, uh, that value specifically gives us a lot of leeway for, uh, add it, for avo uh, avoiding overflow. Um, because one of the uh, issues you can run into when working with uh, fixed width integers from uh, the Wayland protocol is accidentally overflowing if they are too large. Um, so proximity and proximity out events, um, that's when you bring the uh, tool uh, in, uh, in uh, proximity of the tablet so that it can actually detect that it's there. Um, they're indicated with uh, proximity and proximity out events. Um, they are using, uh, as I said, uh, indicating for when it's actually in and out of proximity, but they're also used for uh, indicating when a uh, tablet tool has left proximity of a specific surface um, on a Wayland client. Um, we decided not to have a uh, separate event for uh, leaving um, focus of a surface uh, because then we have to deal with uh, what, order of, uh, what order of events we have to make sure we uh, uphold. For example, does uh, coming out of the surface or coming out of proximity and so forth. Um, and then uh, the, uh, they contain the current ID of the WL tablet tool in use. Um, which I'll explain uh, that idea in just a second. Um, the, uh, 
So we have WL tablet cursor. Um, it's pretty or er, set cursor. Um, it's pretty much the same as uh, setting a cursor for a uh, mouse. Um, a lot of times with uh, drawing tablets, you actually do want to have some sort of cursor, just like a mouse. Um, that's usually only when the uh, tool is actually in proximity. Um, a big reason for this is uh, with certain digi uh, certain Wacom digitizers, uh, especially the uh, ISDV4s, which are the uh, built-in digitizers you'll see on uh, devices like the ThinkPad, Helix, and other built-in uh, all-in-one tablet devices. Um, a lot of times they're not entirely accurate, um, and we don't have, uh, for one, we don't have to code for uh, actually implementing a uh, more advanced calibration method beyond four or six points um, to, uh, so to uh, what's the word, um, to make up for uh, that loss in accuracy. Uh, so where the pen is might not actually represent where the cursor is on the screen. So having a visual indicator of that is pretty necessary for uh, a lot of setups. Um, and it pretty much, as I said before, it pretty much acts as or same as uh, setting the mouse cursor. Um, you can set it to uh, any surface. Uh, the only difference is this disappears when the uh, tablet or when the tool goes out of proximity. So WL tablet button um, obviously represents a uh, button press. Um, uh, buttons actually stay pressed down until the uh, tool leaves the uh, surface. Um, and uh, it, it's pretty much the same as with uh, mice um, because uh, it's useful to know or it's useful to keep it held down until we leave the surface. Um, for uh, doing stuff like drag and drop and that sort of thing. Um, down and up um, on WL tablet, uh, pretty much just when uh, the tool makes contact with the surface and when uh, it leaves contact with the surface. Uh, there's not much else to say on that. Um, so with uh, WL tablet tools, pretty much we uh, manage the uh, different, or we, Ah, sorry. Um, every time a new tool comes into proximity, we notify it via the uh, WL Tablet Manager um, when it comes into proximity of a surface. Uh, notify it right away. So if there were tools that were in use before, uh, the client won't get a notification about them until uh, they do come into use again. Uh, just potentially save on resources and doesn't really make sense to report all of them at once. Um, and that's how w, uh, multiple tablets are handled, pretty much uh, just going through the tablet manager. Um, uh, binding tablets to screens, uh, this is something that needs to be implemented. Um, and I'm just going to mention quickly, uh, we need to come up with a way to uh, b uh, bind each tablet to the proper screen. For example, some tablets like Syntix uh, and other tablets with uh, built-in displays, uh, we need to be able to figure out if they have a built-in display and bind them to that display. Otherwise, bind them to the primary display and uh, so forth. Um, we already have the code for this. Um, I believe uh, GNOME settings daemon uh, has the uh, heuristics for actually doing this. Um, and normalization, I guess I accidentally copied that, oops. Um, so uh, active area selection is the last thing I uh, want to go. Um, it's something else we need to implement. Um, pretty much it's where you set the actual area that you can use on the tablet. Um, reason for this being if you're using like a, a tablet with a, a 16 to 9 ratio with a display of uh, with a 2 to 3 ratio, um, you'll run into the issue of it obviously won't scale properly because you're trying to scale from a rectangle to a square. And that makes the uh, tablet uh, pretty much impossible to use for any actual uh, professional work. So uh, active area select could potentially be used to crop out um, the, the edges so that they uh, map, so that the aspect ratios match. Um, and I'm pretty much almost for instant time. So that's actually the last slide. So I <laughs> shouldn't.
So you mentioned that you're reporting the positions either as uh, negative max short to max short or zero to max short. What are you doing when the, tab the, the tablet is actually associated with a, a display? So if I have my laptop and it's got the Lenovo pen on it and I want to draw on a window, does that come in as these normalized coordinates or does it actually come in in screen coordinates? Um, I probably should have mentioned that. Um, screen coordinates are just mentioned as screen coordinates. Um, you, uh, well, sort of. Um, with screen coordinates, um, you can get them in two different values. You can uh, provide the, resol the dis uh, resolution of the display that you want them to be mapped to, for example, in, your, uh, in what you said it would be uh, the display for your uh, Lenovo. Um, so you can have, uh, so you can provide the resolution for that and it will uh, give you coordinates that are scaled to the resolution of that screen. Um, so absolute coordinates, or you can actually get uh, the coordinates in uh, millimeters um, from uh, start of the, uh, t from the uh, top right corner, or sorry, top left corner of the tablet. So it will generally, in most cases, be uh, just screen coordinates, like you said. So but from the client's perspective, um, it doesn't necessarily know where it is in the window. It doesn't, so it, it can't do anything with, I'm somewhere near the upper left-hand corner. It needs to know where it is in its window because I have its window somewhere here in this display. It doesn't know where. And I put the pen down somewhere in its window and it needs to be able to deal with that. Do you, what's... Um, if what's when you first put it down, um, whatever surface it happens to be lying on when the pen first comes into proximity, it immediately gets a uh, proximity and event and movement event with the uh, initial coordinates. So it does actually get a... Uh, event with uh, where the pen comes into proximity on the surface. Okay, I think that more or less answers things. Um, just, just a quick extra note. Um, we do the millimeters by default is uh, what we do for any absolute device in libinput. But um, when you're talking about Wayland clients, you're already two APIs removed from that. Um, so libinput has, as, as uh, Stephen said, the, uh, has the two APIs, one for just give me the value, which is millimeters and then one for map this value to 1024.768. Um, that's what the compositor does, and then the compositor takes that value, the mapped value, converts it into client coordinates, and that's what you get through the Wayland protocol. So the actual Wayland client doesn't see the millimeter value unless there's like some special one of like map this tablet to the canvas or something, which we don't have yet. But by default, you still get exactly the same X, Y coordinate system as you would get from a mouse or anything else. So okay. most of this is just hidden inside the compositor or in lib input um, to the Wayland client. You just get the normal X, Y coordinates as you would expect. Oh, reasonable. Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.